AMD pretty much just completely destroyed Nvidia's main selling point for their RTX cards. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Brobot. Brobot is a free, super fast program that scours the internet searching for restocks of the latest GPUs, CPUs, and consoles to help you find what you're looking for before it goes out of stock. Thanks to Brobot, I was finally able to purchase a PS5 due to its extremely fast speed and in my case, I noticed it was actually minutes faster than all other popular bots I've tried. So if you're looking for a tool that can help you secure that new GPU, CPU, or console, be sure to click the Discord and Telegram links in the description below to find out more. Alright, so back when AMD revealed their RX 6000 series GPUs, they actually looked really, really good in terms of their performance per watt as well as their total performance, as in fact, they were able to actually compete with the RTX 3090, which is a mighty impressive feat considering that the previous RX 5000 series GPUs didn't get anywhere near the RTX 2080 Ti, so AMD finally had a flagship GPU. GPU to compete with Nvidia, so that was definitely good to see. However, I had a couple of problems with their GPUs. Now, the first problem I had is that unfortunately I just couldn't get them to work properly uh, with Premiere Pro doing the uh, H.265 video compression, which is a thing that I use with my videos very frequently. So unfortunately, I just couldn't use those AMD GPUs. But the other issue I had with the RX 6000 series, and this is a big one, is the fact that they just didn't have an alternative to DLSS. And as many of you may know, DLSS is an awesome feature from RTX that allows the NVIDIA GPUs to get a lot more performance with a minimal hit to the overall visual fidelity of a game. So for me, DLSS is definitely an important feature of RTX. In fact, I believe that, at least for me, DLSS is definitely more important than ray tracing overall. I mean, ray tracing is good and all. I definitely see it as being the future of graphics, but DLSS definitely has a bigger impact in the here and now. So I think it's really important. And when AMD came out with the RX 6000 series and didn't have a competitor to DLSS, that was a a huge red flag for me as you know if they didn't end up getting DLSS or a competitor to DLSS working on their GPUs well you know as time goes on these Nvidia cards would definitely end up being much much faster than their AMD alternatives. Well fast forward to today and AMD finally unveiled their DLSS competitor FSR or Fidelity FX Super Resolution it's kind of a mouthful so I'm just gonna go ahead and call it FSR from now on and you know when they originally talked about FSR I was a little bit skeptical as it wouldn't be using the tensor cores that Nvidia has in their RTX GPUs, and so I had a feeling that FSR would definitely look a lot worse, or maybe it wouldn't give you as much performance, but actually, after watching some reviews from Steve from Gamers Nexus, as well as Hardware Unboxed, I've come to the conclusion that FSR is actually a really impressive piece of technology, and I think it's actually going to be more important than DLSS, and here's why. So, you know, first talking about FSR in terms of its image quality, yeah, it definitely surprised me. I thought it would be a significant downgrade from DLSS. However, when I watched the uh, hardware unbox video when they took a look at FSR. Overall, at least at 4K in the ultra quality setting, FSR was mighty impressive and in fact, I really didn't see a huge difference between FSR and the native resolution. Yes, it looks a little bit softer. It maybe has a little bit more jagged edges, uh, but overall it looks so close that at 4K, I think it's going to do a really, really good job. And compared to DLSS, uh, yeah, they look so similar that I don't think it really matters if you're using DLSS or FSR. The overall image quality at 4K and both their ultra quality settings seems to be very, very similar and they both look very, very good. So that's definitely good to see. Now the downfall of FSR is unfortunately it's not quite as advanced as say DLSS when it comes to running at a lower resolution. It just simply doesn't have as much visual information to get. Uh, so it just can't give you quite the same fidelity of an image. So if you take a look at like uh, 1080p and maybe the medium settings for FSR, you're definitely going to get a much blurrier image. So uh, yeah, FSR is definitely going to be good for those people who are using the high resolution resolution displays are going to be using the either quality or ultra quality settings, but when it comes down to, you know, maybe you're using uh, FSR at 1440p or 1080p and you're using a lower quality image setting on FSR, it's definitely going to look noticeably worse than DLSS, but overall, I gotta say FSR definitely was very impressive to me. It definitely exceeded my expectations, and I think it's actually going to be more impressive than DLSS because I believe that FSR is actually going to be a lot easier to implement, and on top of that, it also should work with a lot more GPUs. In fact, FSR will not only work on AMD GPUs, but it'll also work on NVIDIA GPUs as far back as the 10 series, I believe it was tested with, but in all reality, it could probably work with like a GTX 580. Who knows? We just haven't simply tested those yet. And in fact, it even works on APUs as well. So FSR is definitely going to be an option that works for a lot more people. So I think a lot of game developers are going to go ahead and use FSR over DLSS going forward simply because it's not a black box. It's open to pretty much every single GPU out there. And that's definitely good to see.
see. And in fact, a new article just came out from WCCF Tech talking about how uh, AMD talked to some different developers. And if we go ahead and we take a look at the article, we can see that when they talked to Takeshi Aramaki, studio head and general manager of Luminous Studio Productions, who's currently working on the action RPG Forspoken, he had this to say about FSR. Quote, for the development of Forspoken, we are really feeling the benefits of the low latency of FSR and the high performance that it brings. FSR implementation only took one day. The process was very simple and fit in our pipeline very well. From an image quality standpoint, the difference between the highest quality settings and native resolution rendering is undetectable. FSR integration was very easy and there were no problems even when using dynamic resolution. So yeah, at least according to this developer, it looks like FSR is going to be a very friendly option for many developers out there. It looks like if it is going to end up taking only a day or two to implement, I would guess that yes, a lot of developers are going to choose FSR over DLSS. And you know, to be honest with you guys, I really don't care if DLSS or FSR wins. I just think that, you know, whatever does end up being the most widely available is going to be the technology that wins. And I think that overall getting these new technologies uh, out to gamers is just a benefit to everyone, whether it be DLSS or FSR. It just allows us to get more performance for a very minimal hit to the resolution. And honestly, when you're playing at a high resolution like 4K and you enable these technologies like DLSS, the actual hit to your image quality, it's pretty much unnoticeable. But I will say this between FSR and DLSS, I do believe that Personally, I prefer FSR because not only is it going to be more easy to implement, but on top of that, uh, something that they talked about in the video from Hardware Unbox is that DLSS does tend to have a little bit of ghosting depending on how good the TAA implementation in the game is, whereas FSR isn't going to bring any further weird ghosting to the image. Now, both these implementations are going to have their weird visual uh, oddities that you're going to see, but personally, I think that ghosting is something that I really don't like to see in a game. So if it comes down to FSR, is going to have a little bit more aliasing, it's going to look a little bit softer, whereas DLSS is going to look a little bit sharper, but it's going to have, uh, you know, some ghosting. Personally, I would prefer to have FSR as I really, really don't like ghosting. So honestly, I do hope the FSR does end up winning. And I think that overall, it's just going to be a good thing for gamers. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think the FSR is going to be a better technology? Or do you think that DLSS is going to end up winning out? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you guys in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.